well, being an attractive woman in this industry. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> have you ever experienced, you know, this type of kind of Me Too behavior, like the Harvey Weinstein type of thing where, well, if you want this role, let's go have drinks or, or something kind of inappropriate? I'm going to say this and it's going to piss a lot of people off. Um, I have. And the way that I've dealt with it is like, oh no, I, I tell you about yourself and I let you know that you that's not going to happen. Now you could hire me or you could say fuck me and, and move around and go get somebody else. There, I've always been taught to, to speak up for yourself. And I feel like some of these Me Too women could have done that too, you know? Um, now the people that claim they were raped, rape is not a joke. And I, I feel really bad that that happened to them. Um, but the other stuff, you know, going in the bathroom and he's jacking off and you're just standing there, kick him in his balls, get the hell out of there. You know, he was by, by himself. You're by yourself, you know? That's the first thing we learn as little girls. If, if boys do something to you you don't like, kick them in the balls, kick them in the ding ding. That's what our grandparents, our moms, you know, tell us. Uh, so you automatically have this defense thing that overcomes you and you grow up with that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like some of those women definitely could have been like, yo, I'm so not with this shit. If you don't get the fuck out of my way, excuse my French, yeah. you know? And be and been down with that, but going back to hotel rooms and you know him showing up, you could be like, "Who is it?" If you're not expecting anyone, Harvey. Oh no, honey, I'm I'm incapacitated right now, or some some craziness. You could have said, "Come back later," or "I'll call you," or you don't have to open the door because it's him. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed uh, Eddie Griffin. Look, first off, you had to remember uh, this was in the '70s, all right? I'm old enough to remember the 70s. The 70s is a different time, right? The 70s motherfuckers all had Coke spoons around their fucking necklace. Mm. You go to the damn disco, nigga, the line is laid out on the table. Toot, toot, right? Yeah. When you, you want to level out after a hit of cocaine, you get a Quaalude, right? Yeah. So did he rape these bitches? All of them said the same thing. We went to the room. Why would you go to the room of a known mad man? I don't believe that women um, should put themselves in situations where you know the possibility of a bad outcome is inevitable. When you do that, and this happens, I'm not saying you ask for it, but use your common sense. Bring someone with you if you're going to do that. Yeah. Or don't go at all. Or meet in a public place. That's what I'm saying. Meet at a restaurant. Um, but the crazy part about this Me Too movement, which made me go Ugh, to the whole thing, was I had a friend who told me about a situation with an actor and um, they had sex. She said it was unwilling and she didn't know if she should report this. And I said, well, what exactly happened? She said they had sex. She went and hung out with him afterwards and then left and came back another day and hung out with him some more. But she wanted to go run and tell that he raped you, you couldn't kill this man's career. And you let him, you said it was okay. If you were raped, you would not go back and hang out with this person. You see that situation a lot, actually, in, the, in these uh, in these cases of a, a woman who claims she was raped, but then the man shows that they actually had multiple encounters right. afterwards, which makes you kind of say, well, what exactly happened? So that's why I say, I, I feel terrible for the women that this actually did happen to, yeah. but I feel like a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon just to have something to say or get, or get revenge off of someone that didn't give you the job, you know, and you went ahead and did all that. You, you didn't cover your bases. If you want to be a hustler, you got to do it right or don't hustle at all. Well, I remember I had Lunell on the show and uh, we were talking about a, a comment from Amber Rose where she felt that the Me Too movement really was about rich white women. Nobody really cares what happens to black women anyway. You can see that by the urgency of, you know, missing black girls and raped and beaten black women and, you know, who's fighting for us and stuff like that. And, you know, black women been raped for 450, 500,000 fucking years. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody done a goddamn thing. So, you know, 
while we can be included in the movement, it's not really our movement, but it can affect us in a positive way if we all, you know, come together on that. Um, I didn't go that far in thought, <laughs> but it probably, probably is. Um, I don't know what it is. I just know that uh, let's not cry wolf. You know, if it happened to you, then please, let's do something about it. And if it didn't, don't do that. Because these are human beings, you know. They have families. They, you know, they, you're going to ruin things, and it's unjust. So that's why I say for the people, and I'm not saying it doesn't exist, that it did happen to, please do whatever you can to make sure it doesn't happen again to someone else. But to those that think it's fun and funny to jump on the bandwagon and start doing this to somebody that you either willingly or that you had no contact with, that's so wrong. So that's why you haven't heard me this whole time with the Me Too movement. I haven't tweeted anything. <laughs> I, you know, like I, I just was trying to see where this was gonna fall.